Hi, my name is Jeff Butterworth. I'm the founder of Alien Skin Software, and today I'm going to show you how I made one of our Chrome examples. If you go to the iCandy 6 web pages and go to the examples section and look at Chrome, that very first example uh, is pretty cool. Uh, a lot of people have asked us how we made it, so I'm going to show you, and it's really not that hard to do this stuff. Alright, so let's start by taking a look at a piece of artwork that I brought in from Illustrator. This is part of the iCandy 6 logo. Um, as you can see, it's a kind of interesting shape with really smooth, sharp edges. Um, that is a great way to start if you're going to do some effects with iCandy, especially the text and selection filters. If we take a look at the iCandy 6 startup panel here, uh, it's these top ones, these top 15, um, that do much more interesting stuff if you've got an object in a layer. Uh, let me demonstrate by turning off this background. So you see I've, I've got an opaque object with sharp curvy edges uh, with transparency around it. And that's the kind of thing that our filters um, can really, really do some great effects with. Okay, let me begin by just uh, grabbing this, the black pieces. So I snipped this apart into a couple of different areas. Um, after I brought it in from Illustrator. Um, if I had uh, talked to my graphic designer and gotten the uh, original Illustrator file, then I could have done that in Illustrator first. And so we're going to apply some silver chrome to the black areas and then blue chrome to the iris. All right, you can see that the last time I ran chrome, I was doing something blue. Um, let's pretend like we're starting from scratch. I'll go over to the Settings tab, which is a great way for you to start also, is go to the Settings tab and check out some of our presets. Uh, a lot of times you'll find that there's presets that are very close to what you need, and then you don't have to do as much fiddling. So I'm going to start with this Chrome Round Office Space preset. Now let's customize it a little bit. Bevel Width is probably the, the most useful slider, or one of the most useful sliders in Chrome bevel and glass. It really has a big effect on the look. Alright, that looks good. Now I've made the pupil look more like a hemisphere. And maybe I'll increase smoothness a bit. If you see any, any sort of wrinkles, let me turn smoothness off. If you see stretch marks and wrinkles like that, then uh, just increase smoothness a bit. And then, really, the, the very most important parameter with Chrome is the reflection map. That has a very big effect on, on, on the results. So right now, I've, I've chosen indoor office space. Looks very silver. But if I chose, say, nature garden, it would look very green. Nature mountains looks different. There's, there's a lot of different looks that you can get. Um, and I personally use office space a lot. It just looks very silvery. Um, if you, when you're done watching this video, if you take a look at the web page um, right below where you started the video, I'm going to put a list of my favorite reflection maps, and I, I strongly recommend that you use those ones first. And those are the ones um, that most of our presets are based on. Now, as you can see here, this is a picture. This reflection map was just a photo of our office. And you can really see some chairs and a whiteboard in the background. It's a little distracting. So I'm going to use this blur slider below the reflection map control just to, to make the reflections not be quite as clear. They're a little less distracting now. So I'll apply that. And the results always go into a new layer if you're using Photoshop, which is very handy. As you can see, my original artwork is still available. And now let's apply a different kind of chrome to the iris. So we'll use the same setting that we did last time, except now I'm going to go over to lighting, go to tint color, and choose a blue that I was recently using, and increase tint amount. That looks pretty good. We are getting very close to the final version. Now I want to apply a drop shadow to both of these 
but I don't want to do it separately because I don't want the shadow from the silver area to, to overshadow the blue area. So I'm going to merge these two layers together. Hit Control E on Windows or Command E on Macintosh. And now I will go to the Perspective Shadow Filter. And that is a pretty good looking shadow. All right. I'm going to turn on this background that I made with our texture noise filter. And we've got a pretty good example.